I haven't talked much about this topic on the channel yet, but it's one that's interested me for a very, very long time. And that's wearable technology. More specifically, wearable technology and how it can impact our lives, or even save them. And it's not hyperbole to say that technology like this Apple Watch can have a profound impact on the future of healthcare. I have a personal story around that one too, and it's one of the reasons why my Apple Watch is my favorite piece of technology from the past decade. How did we get here and where is this going? I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. Wearable technology and the ability to scan someone to view their vitals instantly has been a part of science fiction for a long time. I grew up watching Dr. McCoy and Dr. Crusher whip out a tricorder so they could diagnose someone on the spot. And now while we're nowhere close to that level of diagnosis, there's been interesting progress towards making science fiction a reality. In 2013, I backed an Indiegogo project called Scanadu Scout, which was able to take your temperature, heart rate, blood oxygenation, respiratory rate, ECG, and diastolic and systolic blood pressure all at once. All you had to do was hold the device between your thumb and your forefinger and press a sensor against your temple. It had interesting potential, but wasn't able to achieve the lofty promise of a real-life tricorder. In 2016, they hadn't been able to get FDA approvals and shut down the device. But it still showed a glimmer of what might be possible in the future. At the same time that was happening, Apple had announced and released its original Apple Watch. But at that point, it was only able to handle fitness tracking. But by 2018 with the Series 4 and 2019 with the Series 5 watches, they brought health tracking to the mainstream. The Apple Watch is a unique oddity in the technology space. It's not the first smartwatch, and it's not the first fitness tracker that can map your steps or GPS location. And it's not the first wearable that could receive notifications from your phone. But it is the first successful mainstream smartwatch that delivers all of those, plus the ability to detect falls, irregular heartbeats, and potentially damaging sound levels to your ears. It's the first smartwatch that also has an entire medical research program that researchers can tap into, giving them access to not just hundreds of participants, but hundreds of thousands. And from the very first Apple Watch, I bought into this vision for what this type of device could be and what it could mean for the future of health tracking. In 2018, Apple introduced ECG functionality on the Apple Watch Series 4. Simply place your finger on the crown and sit still and you'll get a single lead electrocardiograph reading. The immediate access to be able to take a reading at the exact moment you feel rapid or skip beats can be crucial information for doctors. Add to that the regular background heart rhythm checks that the watch performs, which can alert you if it detects atrial fibrillation or low heart rate. To say that these features can and have saved lives isn't hyperbole. There are countless stories that have popped up in the news reports over the past year of people telling stories about how the Apple Watch saved their life. I had a family member that had this exact thing happen not too long ago. He felt a tap on his wrist and it was his Apple Watch telling him to seek medical attention immediately because his heart rate was dangerously low. Family took him to the hospital right away and he was frighteningly close to dying. So the Apple Watch absolutely saved his life at that time. That is precisely why I'm so interested and excited by this type of technology. As it gets more compact and portable and is able to be with us at all times, that immediacy to diagnosis paired with smart software can make an astounding difference. The Apple Watch is only a single lead ECG, which tests and records the timing and strength of Heartbeat's electrical signals. It's effective, but it's limited. At this point, it can only provide information about irregular heartbeats and rhythms like AFib. A standard ECG that you'd get in a hospital or doctor's office is a 12-lead ECG. It's able to diagnose heart attacks and other disorders with more accuracy. Now, I'm obviously not a doctor, but I had some personal experience that recently showed me the future potential with something like the Apple Watch. And at the risk of oversharing, a few months ago, I had some kind of viral infection that settled in my chest and I was having difficulty breathing with some pretty serious chest pain. My wife took me to the emergency room, which is where they gave me a 12 lead ECG to rule out a heart attack. Now, while everything about my breathing issue turned out to be fine with some medication and time, that ECG discovered that I have something called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. 
My heart has an extra electrical pathway that goes around the heart that can cause rapid and irregular heartbeats. Basically, the electrical beat signal sent to the heart can start looping around the heart and back in again, giving another incorrect signal to beat, kind of like a feedback loop. In my case, it's not life-threatening, and there's a simple procedure that can correct it if needed. But what caught my attention was what it looks like on the ECG. A normal ECG shows up with a quick spike up and then down again on the heartbeat. Someone with Wolf Parkinson White has a slope to the beginning of the heartbeat. That's it. When you know what you're looking for, it's so simple to see. Now, me being the nerd that I am, I immediately ran an ECG on my Apple Watch and looked at the shape of the rhythm and saw that slope there too. Now, while the Apple Watch isn't approved or tested to detect Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, it does show up in the ECG reading. And that drove home the potential of this type of wearable technology for me personally. While the Apple Watch is the first truly mainstream wearable that offers incredible health tracking features, the research side of what Apple has built is just as impressive. Apple introduced an entire platform called Research Kit and Care Kit that allows both researchers and customers to participate in massive medical research projects and to track their medical conditions. As with all research, one of the biggest challenges is getting enough people into a study to get meaningful data. Research Kit provides access to millions of participants. In 2018, Stanford University ran a heart study using Research Kit that included almost 420,000 participants, and I was one of them. Typical studies might get anywhere from dozens to a few thousand participants. As platforms like Research Kit and wearables like the Apple Watch gain more adoption, it's opening up incredible opportunities for research studies. In November of last year, Apple announced three new studies. Harvard and the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences are running a woman's health study, which is studying menstrual cycles and the relationship to conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome, infertility, osteoporosis, and menopause. There's also a study being conducted by Brigham and Women's Hospital and the American Heart Association that's looking at early warning signs of atrial fibrillation, heart disease, and declining mobility. And the University of Michigan is studying how long-term sound exposure impacts stress levels and cardiovascular health. This last one is only possible because of the new Apple Watch Series 5 sound level monitoring feature. Time will tell if this type of wearable technology paired with massive software platform research meets up with expectations. I'd recommend checking out the Midlife Crisis YouTube channel for a cardiologist's take on the Apple Watch. He's also very excited about the potential here, but gives some interesting insights on keeping our expectations in check. And directly related to the topic of this video, he has another video about a device from AliveCore, which is a tiny portable six-lead ECG that he used on a flight to India. It's a big step up from what the Apple Watch is currently capable of providing, but it's the size of a small pack of gum and can help diagnose someone's condition on the go with more accuracy. Again, another example of why I'm so optimistic of where wearables and other portable health technology is going. I use my Apple Watch to remind me of upcoming appointments, to quickly respond to text messages, control the playback of a podcast while I'm walking the dog, and to even open the trunk of my Tesla. And while all of those range from useful to just fun, it's the health tracking aspects of the Apple Watch that set it apart. And it's those features that I think are revolutionary and underrated by many of us talking about tech on social media. Apple sold 24.4 billion worth of products in their wearables and home accessories category in the last year. They don't break out the exact number of watches in their quarterly numbers, but the research firm Strategy Analytics estimates that in Q3 of 2019 alone, Apple sold around 6.8 million watches. Apple accounts for about half of all smartwatches sold. And the next closest competitors are Samsung with about 13% and Fitbit with about 11%. And the move towards smartwatches is taking a huge bite out of traditional watch sales. Fossil Group has seen sales drop by nearly $1 billion over the past couple of years. At this point, this is still Apple's game because platforms like Google Wear OS are still lagging way behind in user experience, hardware, performance, and usability. Given enough time, Google will most likely work out the kinks, and Qualcomm will hopefully produce better silicon that can compete with Apple's performance of their processors. But for right now, Apple has a commanding lead over everyone else in those categories. The trend line for wearable and smart technology is pretty clear though, and in time, others will catch up. Looking more at the macro view, the wearable and health technology industry is growing quickly. One analysis expects to see it grow over 17% by 2024, 
Another that wearables will reach 54 billion by 2023. Business Insider Intelligence Research estimates an annualized rate of 10% growth by 2023 and goes way beyond just smartwatches. Things like smart fabrics that can help monitor blood oxygen levels and heart rate, or a Philips wearable biosensor that can track temperature, heart rate, and respiratory rate, and Omron's wearable blood pressure monitor. And this is only scratching the surface of what's out there and what's to come. The future of wearables and healthcare is going to be exciting to watch. Given where the Apple Watch started, what it can do now, and where it could be going, hopefully you understand why I'm so impressed with it, and why I think we should be keeping our eye on the future of wearable technologies. I'd love to hear what you think. Are any of you smartwatch users? Any experiences with health tracking that you'd care to share? Jump in the comments and let me know. And if you think I've earned it, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. Without that bell, you might miss out. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends because it really does help support the channel. And finally, a big welcome to two new Patreon producers, Lisa Kaz and W. Drake. Your support is really helping to make these videos possible, along with the rest of the Patreon crew, which is over 100 of you now. So be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. And I'm also including a little bit of an extra story to that ER visit I talked about in this video there for my Patreon members. So be sure to check that out too. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.